Oscar, and I'm here with PS Arts. Thank you for joining me in my studio, and thank you for welcoming me into yours. Today, we have a really cool project based on an artist named Mark Bradford. Mark Bradford is an artist from Los Angeles that works with abstract art. Do you know what abstract art is? Yeah, so abstract artists don't try to make realistic work. They don't try to use images that are realistic. They're more focused on color, on shape, form to create their images. But what makes Mark Bradford unique is that he creates what he calls social abstraction. So in social abstraction, even though the artist isn't using real images of people or real images of things, the artist is still focused on what is going on around them. They're focused on what is happening with the people around them, what's going on in their lives, what is important to talk about. So Mark Bradford has made a lot of work and he's talked about a lot of different things in his artwork. But when you look at his artwork, a lot of what he finds most important is to document is documenting the city of Los Angeles, his home in South Central Los Angeles, um, his own life, the lives of African Americans and black people in his city and in uh, the United States. And he's also taken on trying to talk about the experiences of other people whose stories might not always be heard. Our project today is going to be inspired by his artwork called Deep Blue. Now the image we're looking at right now is only a portion of the painting. This painting is massive. Let's focus on this small area of the painting. What do you notice about this painting? And what do you see that makes you say that? What do you notice about the colors, the lines, the texture? What do you think he is trying to say or what image do you think he's trying to create? So this artwork could cover a lot of different ideas. Uh, when you look at those lines in the painting, it kind of looks like you're looking at a city from a bird's eye view. So if you were a bird flying over a city, you would imagine it would kind of look like what you're looking at now. So we're going to be creating something similar to this painting using uh, a couple different materials. To start our project, you're going to need a surface. A white piece of paper will do just fine. If you don't have a white piece of paper, um, you can use some cardboard instead. You're also going to need some magazines. It doesn't matter the, the kind of magazines that you get, but if you have magazines that have images of things that you're interested in, that is a plus. You're going to need uh, some oil pastels or something to color with. If you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons or markers, um, other things that you might have to color with. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, glue, black paint, dish soap that you can mix into your black paint to thin it and slow down drying, and some brushes that you can use to paint. So for our first step, we're going to take our colors. I'm using oil pastels, but if you don't have oil pastels, grab yourself some markers, some crayons, some colored pencils, whatever you have to add some color. And we're going to add fields of color. So what I mean by that is you're just adding color to your paper. You don't need to draw any faces. You don't need to draw anything because we're going to be covering this up with some black paint. So anything that you draw is likely not going to show up in your final piece. So remember, even though it is abstraction and we're not drawing realistic things, realistic images, it doesn't mean that we can't represent things still. So right now we're using color, we're using shapes, we're even using uh, line work. You can see some of the, the lines that I've made here, very uh, sort of aggressive, very fast. All of those things can represent emotion. Um, they can represent whatever you want them to represent. So think about maybe how you're feeling. That might help you choose the colors. 
that you want to use uh, that might help you choose how fast or how slow you color um, the kind of marks that you make on your paper so this is a uh, and that'll be an important step to sort of set the tone for your artwork so your tone is how your artwork is going to feel when people view it when Mark Bradford is making his paintings he is thinking about people the people in his neighborhood he's thinking about the city the city that he lives in the cities that he's been in and he's thinking about what's important here what are people going through that needs to be talked about what is important in my experience that I want other people to know about that I think other people should be talking about is there going is there something going on in my city that people need to talk about is there something going on in my city that I can talk about with my artwork so if you have paint available I'm using temper paint if you want to put some on your palette I'm just using a regular plate and you want to mix it with some dish soap ask an adult before you use dish soap this is going to help your paint run a little more so that we can lay it on our paper it's going to make it a little lighter a little more watery and it'll dry a little bit slower and you just want to mix it in so once you've mixed your paint with the dish soap you're going to cover your underpainting with some black paint. Now you're gonna cover the entire thing. While the paint is still wet, you can either use a pair of scissors or the back of a paintbrush or a toothpick and you're going to scratch some lines out of your black paint and you can see the color that we've done in the back there, it's starting to show up. Now I'm just making lines wherever I want them to go. There's no specific way to do this. You might want to, uh, every once in a while, clean your brush up. There's no specific way to do this. There's no wrong way to do this. It's up to you what you want your design to sort of look like. And again, Mark Bradford's, a lot of times they, they look like a city from a bird's eye view. If you were looking down on a city, you would see all the different roads. And this is kind of what it would look like. The different roads, the different freeways. They make all these interesting lines that intersect, they cross each other. So once you're happy with the lines that you've made, you're just gonna set it off to the side and you're gonna let it dry for a little bit while you move on to the next step. So while your paint is drying, you're going to want to look through the different magazines that you have and tear out some sheets um, that you think you might want to use. When I was tearing out my sheets, I was looking at the different colors that I wanted to use. Mark Bradford doesn't actually use any paint. Um, all of his work is done through paper and 
materials that he finds but none of it is paint uh, he uses the color on the sheets as his paint and as his color um, so tear out sheets tear out images that you might want to use um, cut out some words that you might want to use as well we're going to use these sheets to collage onto our painting so once you have a sheet like this all right you're going to want to cut it down into smaller sort of sections like this you don't have to cut all your sheets into this size you can have some bigger ones like this but keep in mind a lot of them might be bigger than your actual painting uh, so when we put them on there we might scrunch them up a little bit to be able to actually glue them on there and this is also going to give your paper some texture one of the things that Mark Bradford does to his paper is he soaks it in water and he'll leave it there uh, for days. Now we're not going to leave it here for days, uh, but he'll leave his paper in water, submerged in water for days. The ink will start to drip off the paper um, and it'll look more like actual paint. What we're going to do is we're just going to soak it a little bit to get it like this and this is going to give it some the paper a little more texture it's going to start to tear and so be careful because it is fragile now the color is going to fade a little bit so it just gives us a, a different kind of material to work with and it changes the paper once you have your paper and your material you can start to glue them onto your background so we're going to take some glue here now you can either add the glue directly to your paper, but it might be easier to just add it onto wherever you're gonna glue the paper. So I'm gonna glue it somewhere down here in the corner. And I wanna flip it over because I want the colors on this side to show. So I'm just kinda adding it on there now it's going to need some glue here on this side so i'm going to add some glue there now at this point uh my painting is pretty much dry however because the paper is wet it is going to activate the paint again it's going to bring it back to life so um, try not to move it too much because your paint will smudge so I have something like that. That's what I'm going to keep. And I have some more pieces of paper here. Um, I cut out some more magazine paper here. I really like the colors on this. So I'm going to go ahead, scrunch these up. Get some texture. Make them look a little older. So now that we have it, we're going to collage it onto our paper. So keep in mind, this is the kind of work that you can continue to work on. Mark Bradford, when he's working on his collages, he'll add things to it, but he'll also decollage, which is when you tear things from your work. So for example, if I don't like something going on in this area, I can tear some of those off and remove it and then maybe add to it later. Or maybe I'll like just the way it looks when I remove paper from it. So allow you some time for your work to dry and then take a look at it see if you enjoy it the way it is or if you'd like to add more to it maybe you've covered up too many of these uh, of these background lines maybe you want them to show a little more so you would have to tear from your paper right and those are the final steps to complete this project 
if you would like to um, and uh, you have some extra paint available maybe different colors you can splatter some different colors on there or you can leave it as is uh, mark bradford doesn't just use paper he uses a lot of different materials he's been known to use rope uh, string a lot of different things that he can find out in the city uh, but all the things that he uses are somehow connected to the idea that he's trying to communicate through his artwork so keep that in mind while you're choosing materials for your work so this is my mark bradford inspired project and i'd really like to see what you made um, so if you'd like to share with us um, ask an adult for permission and at the end of this video you'll get some information on where and how you can share some of your work with us um, so i hope you had fun this brings us to the end of our project and always remember that as a PS artist, you have the freedom to imagine and the power to create. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.